Hey everybody, it is time for Wednesday Night Refuel once again. So we're going to have a great time and I hope you came and are here ready for a good night. While we're waiting on everybody to log on, I'm just going to check and make sure everything's firing right. And uh, let's see, yeah, it'll be good here. I don't know, there are some oddities here. So anyway, all right, well, I am trying to see who's with us. Oh, there we go, there we go. Hey, Gary, hey, there we go, all right. So anyway, once again, it is time for Wednesday Night Refuel. This is my... Uh, gift from my good friend uh, John Mosbach in Holland. So he's helping us with refuel tonight. So we can say thank you to him, right? So we are, we are grateful for good friends. But tonight, we're going to have a good time. And thank you for hanging out right here on refuel. So as we get started, I'm just going to tell you a couple of things. Uh, three things, actually. Number one, hey, Paula, hey, Lisa. Number one is this, Refuel is all about encouragement. Right in the middle of our week, uh, I don't know how your week can go, but sometimes by Wednesday midweek, I'm in need of a refuel. <laughs> sometimes I'm in need of a pick-me-up, so that's what we want it to be, just an encouragement to get you the, through the next bit of this week, until you can get in the house of God on Sunday and get really full. So, so that's number one, that's what Refuel is. Number two, there's a couple of things that we need to know inside of that is right here on the screen, right below you on Facebook anyway, is the comment section. So I would love for you to get engaged with that and uh, let us know where you're watching from. If you have a comment, a thought, make sure you share it. It makes a big difference. I say this all the time that you'd be surprised at how many people are moved by something someone else wrote just in the comments. So that's a big deal. So I am grateful for all of you, right? Jeff, I am believing for you and I'm praying for you. And guess what? I, I'm going to, it's going to be a good one. So I'm glad you're here. But anyway, as we step into this, we talked about what we are. We talked about the, the part of the engagement is the conversation. And uh, also, don't forget, right? Oh, see, you're already ahead of me. It's the hearts, the loves, the likes, all that right there is the amen corner. It's for the, you know, we're old fashioned. <laughs> that's the amen corner. And it lets me know you're tracking with me. And if you find something to laugh that's funny, it's a great way to just interact. And then the last thing is this before we step in is make sure that you share this. <clears throat> it makes a big difference, believe it or not. You know people that I don't. And maybe tonight we're talking about something that somebody in your life, you know they need it. So don't hesitate to share it. And uh, anywhere inside the broadcast, just share it. And remember, there will be thousands of people that join us throughout the week. And uh, we just want everybody to feel a lift, right? A lift right in the middle of all this chaos in our world. So as we talk about chaos, hey Jim, as we talk about chaos, you know, I was really just thinking today and just kind of going through some thoughts in my head and, and some challenges that we face as not just churches or believers, but as just people. We're watching the news. We see, uh, we see all of the crazy things that are happening around us and um, man you wonder sometimes I, I don't know about you but I wonder sometimes what in the world is going on right well the one thing that I can tell you is I can with a lot of confidence say we can guess what's going on pretty certainly and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you guys right here first. Well, I'll tell you what. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to announce this one. I'm going to hold that one in my hat for a little bit. But anyway, we've got some exciting stuff coming up for you that I think you'll like. But we live in such a chaotic time 
And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've dealt with it in your jobs. You've dealt with it in different avenues and places in your own life. I get it. But there are some questions that I think we all have to ask ourselves in trying times. By trying times, sometimes it can be that people that you love or have sown into, have invested into, let you down. Anybody? <laughs> oh, you're going to be quiet tonight. I see. So nobody wants to answer the question for the old preacher. <laughs> We've all felt let, let down. We've all felt hurt, right? That's, that's one thing, relational. We've all felt the tension and the pressure from the world around us. Uh, let's say our jobs. A lot of you have really had to fight for the things that we believe in. And some of you have been required, and let's just call it what it is, some of you have been required to stand in a way that others have not been required to stand. And it's challenging, right? It's a challenge. And I'm going to tell you that there are times that even as a mature believer, even as someone who's followed Christ for a long time now, you know, there are times that I struggle with some of that. You know, you get so much negativity just bombarding us, right? From the news, from all the different things that are hitting us, from just people around us. You know, if, if, if they're not talking about uh, election tampering, they're talking about, uh, <laughs> they're, they're talking about Russia, they're talking about China, they're lying about this, and they're lying about that, and it's just every where I'm trying to be nice and sometimes it really is a challenge so tonight what I wanted to do is because I know that I'm not alone I know that all of us are in the same boat but I also know this that some of us are more equipped than others for the challenges the challenges not only that are we are facing currently but the challenges that are ahead. And that's what I briefly kind of wanted to dig into tonight. Yeah, Jim, I bet you are glad to be retired. <laughs> so, challenges. So, you know what? As a matter of fact, let me just ask you, just right here in the comments, for the next 30 seconds or so, is what are maybe a couple of, you don't have to go deep, deep and, and expose yourself or whatever, however deep you want to go. <laughs> But what are some of the places that you have been challenged in in this season? That you felt really pushed, really challenged? You know, for me, it's been an absolutely, it's been a very demanding time. And I have struggled to maintain a, the family ministry balance. That's been a tough one for me. So let's see what else somebody else has got here. You know, I'm going to be patient. So Sarah saying her health, yeah, those are big challenges. You can count on that. Health can, health issues can sidetrack us in a big way. Yeah, friendships and health, Jeff. Yeah, you know, and I think all of us. The truth is, we're Beverly working. <laughs> yeah, oh, rude customers at work. Yeah, believe it or not, I deal with that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, family, that, I, it's amazing that all of us, at some level, we, we tend to, and maybe it's different seasons, different moments, but we all struggle in a lot of the same areas. And you know, I'm going to say this as well, that one of the things that I find that people struggle with now is anxiety. Just as I know it's not a specific, but anxiety. And you say, well... Well, we're believers. We shouldn't deal with fear and anxiety, but we are just, we're just pounded with anxiousness in our lives. It's, it's all around us. It pushes us and pushes us. And we live in a culture that doesn't know how to slow down. We don't know how to breathe. We certainly don't know how to enjoy the moment. As a matter of fact, we live in a society and a culture today where everybody is so easily offended. 
listen, the one thing I'll say is, uh, you know, I've offended people. Uh, not, you know, I can't think of a time that I've offended people intentionally. Um, I, I've, I've offended people unintentionally by not having all the information about some situation that I've walked into and people misunderstanding what I'm communicating. You know, and if anybody knows me, I, I, I can get along with just about anybody. But even in my situation, there's those challenges. And I think all of us have those. So what I wanted to do was kind of take that and just talk about the fact that it's resistance. Right. Let's let's think about that. Let's see, Christy. You said anxiety with news. How to raise a child and finding time for family. (laughs) Yeah, this is a it's a mad, mad, mad world. That is the truth. And I think one of the challenges that we need to pay attention to, (laughs) Paul. (laughs) I'm a godly man. What's your pronoun? (laughs) Don't get me in trouble. (laughs) <laughs> but it's true and it is it is I mean have you ever have you gone to the doctor lately and had to fill out the little form and you're filling it out and when you drop down and do your uh, of, of your background and all that stuff and it comes down to gender and you've got like this super long uh, there's like a million choices now and you're just looking at them going, I don't even know what that means <laughs> however I think one of the things that we have to dig into is to understand just a couple of things, all right? So the challenges that we face, the challenges and the circumstances, the crises, the, the, all the things that are just rolling around us all the time, I think we have to take a different perspective because here's one of the things that I find is so challenging to people is simply understanding that this is a spiritual battle. Understanding that this really is a spiritual battle. And what confounds me is that believers, now, and let me say this, that I believe a lot of this is on Christian leadership. I think uh, uh, Christian leaders, uh, pastors, teachers across the board, when we're not talking about spiritual warfare and helping believers understand scripturally what that means and what that looks like, then we're doing a huge disservice to the people around us because we are so deep in spiritual warfare that we need to be so aware. It needs to be a conversation that we're having all the time. So now that all sounds so negative. (laughs) It's like, Clay, we wanted to be fueled up. I'm getting there. And here's where it starts, okay? We have to change our perspective, all right? What if you began to look and think about the resistance, the challenges, the opposition, and started looking at it as something to make you stronger? Resistance. That's what makes you stronger. You know, the older, the older I get, and we talk about uh, staying healthy at my age, it's like, you know, it's resistance training, resistance training, light cardio, heavy resistance training. And, and it's true. It makes us stronger. So I want you to change your thing. And remember this, that when you are fighting this battle, there are a few things that you've got to gravitate toward. And part of it is understanding that you cannot control every circumstance. You know, none of us knew in 2020 that we were going to be rolling into what we did. (laughs) You know, none of us. You know, uh, nor in 2021 or 2022. (laughs) It's been a confusing time. But none of us would have guessed. I don't believe any of us would have guessed everything that was going to take place. And here's what we have to understand is we can't control every single circumstance. We can't, we can't forecast the future, so to speak. But the one thing that we can control is our response. Our response. Because I've seen people, get, I've seen people respond in abject fear. 
I've seen people respond in ignorance. I've seen people bury their heads and say, this soon shall pass. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to talk about the end times. That's one of the announcements I'll make. I don't want to talk about end times. I don't want to talk about that stuff. It just, it just makes me sad. <laughs> okay. I don't want to deal with this stuff. I, I've seen it all. Then I've seen people who have jumped completely overboard and have jumped in on every conspiracy theory that they can possibly find. So here's what I want you to understand is the one thing that we can control through all of this is our response to crisis. Our response to what's going on. And so just in short, because I know it's already 646, I, I wanted to give you a few things that you could dig on this week to help you right where you're at, okay? So how do we do this? How do we control our response? How do we deal with crisis? Because we've got anxiety and stress and challenges and sickness and pe our loved ones dying and everything changing around us. Um, corrupt politics, corrupt leadership, corrupt this, corrupt that. It's crazy. How are we supposed to wrap our heads around it? Well, first we understand that our source is not people. Our trust ultimately is not in man. Our trust is in who God is and what he says. And that's a powerful truth. And I want you to grab a hold of that. So here's just a couple of things. I'm going to give you, let me give you three things. All right. I'll give you three things tonight. And number one, if you do want to understand that, and Beverly, I'll talk about that in just a moment, is number one, if you're going to respond well, and this is a life lesson, okay? Take it from me. See all that gray hair? I earned it. <laughs> and here's what I've learned. You need to choose beforehand that you're not going to compromise. You've got to make a decision before that no matter what happens, you're not going to allow yourself to get distracted or redirected from God's purpose that God has called us to. So you say, well, I, I've already made that. No, you have to make the decision that no matter what happens, no, I'm going to say it again, no matter what happens, no matter what, <laughs> I'm not going to be distracted and I'm not going to turn away from what I know to be true and what I know to be right. See, we live in a morally relativistic uh, uh I think I said that right. I said it too fast. But we live in that kind of society where right is subjective. You know, that's not accurate. There is truth. And what I'm telling you is that we have to choose beforehand, before any of the things actually confront us. We've got to choose. I'm going to stand for the purpose that God created me for. I'm going to maintain my values. Y'all need to listen to me. You need to maintain your values, and you have to make this choice before you ever get there. All right? What are your values? Come on. You can list them here on, on the screen. What, what are values to you? What does that look like to you? You've got to maintain those. And as a follower of Christ, I have Christian biblical values. All right? That means... I don't just choose my own way when everything feels, when I feel like I just want to do something else. No, I have made a decision beforehand that I'm going to stay true to what I know God's called me to. So I'm going to stay true to my values. I'm going to stay true in my faith. I'm going to keep believing no matter what. That's good, Christy. Integrity, honesty. I love that. Uh, I'm going to stay in my faith, I'm going to stay seeking. I'm, I'm going to stay on my face before God because I know who I am. I'm, a, I'm a, a human who fails, and he's a God who chooses to love me anyway. So uh, I'm going to stay firm in my faith. I'm not going to compromise there. Uh, how about this? Our discipline. As a pastor, this is one of the great weaknesses of God's people in this generation right now, in this season that we're in. And of course, this doesn't resonate to everybody. But as a whole, if we lump it all together, Christian discipline is almost non-existent. We see it in church attendance. We see it in biblical habits. We see it in all of these different things, uh, in justifying bad behavior for 
uh, we're just having fun or we're just living life and oh God understands and I love this one don't worry about it pastor me and God we got our own thing going no you don't <laughs> Because God's given us values. God's given us faith. He's given us, he's given us and showed us the disciplines that we need in, my li in our lives to stand. And that's, every, that's exactly right, Jim. We've got to stand every day against the enemy. And the enemy can show himself in many different ways. So, as I said, we've got to make a decision on the front end that I'm gonna serve God no matter what. I'm gonna stand for biblical values. I'm gonna stand for the things that God has brought me to. I'm gonna love people. I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna do all these things. And I'm not going to judge. I'm not gonna do those things. No, not judge inappropriately. I'm going to live a biblical life and I'm gonna stand for what's right and I choose beforehand for that. Okay, I, have to, I can only give you snippets of that, okay? Number two. Decide that you're not just going to survive this thing. Okay? Decide that you're not just going to survive it. You're going to thrive in it. See, let me tell you something. We all felt the same when we hit uh, COVID year. Can we call it that? Is it even worth calling it? Yeah, because COVID is a real deal, man, and it, it's mean. But when we hit that year, it was a challenge. And there were businesses that failed. There were businesses that closed. There were also businesses and churches that didn't shut their doors that thrived. Right? Why is that? I think it's a mentality. I think it's a mentality of grabbing a halt and saying, you know what? I'm not just going to try to make it through this where we've all been and we all find ourselves sometimes in that state. Right? We do. But we have to consciously say, I'm not just going to barely make it. I'm going to thrive through this. There is a scripture I'm going to read to you real quick. I've got to put on my glasses. And uh, it's just 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 through 5 is, and this is Paul speaking. He says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Let me, I'm going to read that again. And some of us need to be reminded of this, okay? If God's given us these supernatural tools that we only get when we're in God's presence, when we, we, that's the only way we get these, all right? By being filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being in His presence, all right? So I want you to hear that again. They have divine power to demolish strongholds, and we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Wow. And then it goes one step further and says, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to God. <laughs> wow. I think we all have some work to do. <laughs> it's, it's true. And listen, here's one of the powerful things to learn is that crisis always makes us lean into what we truly believe. We lean into Christ. We lean into Christ. And sometimes when things are good, we kind of forget that. But when things get tough, we lean into Christ. And I'm telling you, if you're struggling, if you're in that place, and let me tell you something, if you're not struggling yet, you're going to have challenges. You know it. If you're not struggling, you're not alive. So remember that. There are weapons for this, but you've got to decide, I'm going to fight. I'm not going to just lay down and do that. You know, I had a dog when I was a kid uh, growing up, and his name was Spot. Yes, we were very creative <laughs> when we named our dogs. And Spot was, a, was just a, a stray that we picked up, and, and Spot was just pitiful. He was a pitiful little short dog, and, and uh, not that short had anything to do with it, so don't send me those emails. <laughs> but he was just pitiful. And uh, I don't know what happened in his life. I don't know what happened before he met us. But any time that Spot felt threatened, 
he immediately rolled over and showed his belly. Think about that. I think we've got a lot of Christians who are spot believers. And that any time a challenge comes up, they just roll over and show their belly. It's not a bad analogy. But what we need to understand is that God's given us the tools. And in that, and let me just make this a third, third final thing I'll share, is this. I think we all have to realize that we need to stop playing defense all the time and get on the offense. Listen. I'm not going to sit there while the enemy tries to rob me of the things that God has given me. I'm not just going to sit by idly and allow the enemy to destroy the city that I love or the nation that I love. I'm not going to sit by and watch him destroy families that I care deeply about. And I'm going to tell you this. I think when we rise up as believers and make a decision that I'm not going to tolerate this in my life and in my world. I'm modeling this for me. And we stand up for the righteousness of God. We'll see the revival that we've longed for. See, is, the people say this all the time. We're waiting for revival. No, revival is here. The question is, are you in a place to receive revival? And maybe some of you need to be that revival, right? So. In other words, we need to move from a defensive stance into an offensive stance. Go after it. Man, beat that enemy down, right? Stop allowing the enemy to steal your joy, to steal your family, to steal your relationships, to steal you from the church that loves you. Oh, say, oh they don't love me. They don't even know me. Yes, they do. They love you as much as you'll allow them to. Dig in and you watch what God will do. You watch what God, how God will show up. And you say, well, how do I do that? How do I move from defense to, from defense to offense? All right? Just get, I'm going to give you, in the last part of this, I'm going to give you five quick things. I'm going to try not to talk about them. <laughs> okay? Number one, if you want to move from defense to offense, defense to offense, number one, stand for God. Stand for a biblical worldview. Stand for Christian values of what we know is right. Right? Okay. So moving from defense to offense. Worship. Worship. Don't just worship when they play your favorite song. Worship Him from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to sleep. Worship Him with your lifestyle. Worship Him with the words that you speak and the love that you show around you. Love deeply. That's worship. Wow. Serve. Yeah. Stand for God. Worship God. Serve people. In other words, that's part of that whole love deeply. At Three Oaks, we have, as part of our vision statement of who we are and why we do what we do, is that we love deeply, that we grow daily and we live fully. And that whole loving fully, uh, loving deeply, comes to this place that we serving is so vital. It's so vital. And it does something in our hearts when we're not just takers and we become givers. That's where real blessing comes in. Okay, so after serve, let me get to the real hard parts. Pray. Christian churches, in most cases, are very anemic in prayer. We've got to shift. If we want to go from defense to offense, we've got to learn to pray again. And I'm not talking about, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord my soul to keep. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. But I'm talking about pure out intercession. I'm talking about falling on your face before God and learning how to seek the throne. To really pour your heart out to God. Prayer. And the last one is this. is. Uh, is we have to learn to trust God with what tomorrow and what our crisis is. Trust God. As scary as that is, we have to remember that He created the purpose. 
He created all this for us and He created us and He set us in this time for a reason. All of us that are here, God destined for us to be here in this moment. So it's not a mistake. So don't just sit back and let life pass you by. Yeah, work may have been rough this week. You may face some challenges with your health. You may chase these things that, that you feel like you're, uh, you know, you're a dog chasing its tail sometimes. Listen to me. Stop, take a breath, and remember that God brought you here to this moment for a reason, and we need you. That is something that you need to hear. We need you. So stand up. Be who God called you to be. And let's spread love and let's spread, spread truth. We can do this. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. There's more in you than you think. And I want to tell you this too because somebody needs to hear this as well. You matter. So once again, remember, we need you. Who am I talking about? The world. We need you to be the best you, to be the spirit-filled you that God created you to be. And we can do it, and so can you. I believe in you. So guys, that's all I have for you tonight. And uh, I just want to tell you, I love you. I'm thankful for every one of you. Don't forget to share this as soon as you get a chance, if you haven't already. And uh, I am so grateful for every one of you for hanging out with us. And um, if you do me a favor, if you haven't commented to say where you're watching from, please comment on here and let me know uh, as I go back through and kind of look at those. And the last thing I would say is this. Pray for everybody else that's going to be watching this. Pray that God will ignite something in people's hearts. I would appreciate it. Guys, I love you. I'm so thankful for every single one of you, all of you around the world, all of you everywhere in every time zone. I'm thankful for each of you, and I'm praying for all of you now. And guys, listen, I love you. I'm going to be bringing an announcement, be watching on Facebook and Instagram uh, over the next couple days, and uh, we're going to tell you something that I think a lot of you are really going to enjoy, and uh, it's coming up. But guys, I love you. If you don't have a home church and if you're in the North Nashville area, come hang out with us at Three Oaks Church, just right inside Gallatin. You can find all the information on the site right here underneath you in the Facebook page, or you can go to the website, threeoakschurch.com, and it'll give you everything that you need. We'd love to see you. It's a pretty cool place. It's some great people. I'm a very fortunate pastor, and... Uh, it's going to be a great day. Love you guys. Love you, Jody. Thank you, Joe. All of you guys, you're amazing. I will see you later. And guess what? I'm still praying that you'll make tomorrow way better than today was. I think you can do it. You're, you're an overcomer. I know you are. You got to believe me. <laughs> Bye, y'all.